All right, what is up traders? What's up tycoons? Super excited for today's video. Uh, lots of news headlines we're going to cover, especially natural gas staying above this $3 level. We'll go over why that's important. We'll also talk about the new golden era for new US, uh, US natural gas and the Chevron LNG strike happening in Australia. There's some more developments over there. We are going to break down the weekly chart for the natural gas futures, as well as take a look at the MCX futures on a monthly supply zone and demand zone. And then uh, also take a look at the four hour chart so you guys can see who's holding support pretty well here. We're going to look what it's going to do next, as well as zoom in so it's a little bit clearer for you guys. We'll take a look at the Boyle daily chart, all right, break down a possible scenario for Boyle as well as UNG, uh, and really give you guys a nice comprehensive analysis of all of those. But as always, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only, and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So please be sure to read through the full disclaimer. If you're new to the channel, I do want to mention I started a completely free newsletter called Investment Intelligence, giving out free valuable finance content, as well as try to sprinkle in some free trade ideas for you in there. Okay, so this was a trade idea on Tesla going over some of the uh, conditions we were looking at for a bullish thesis. All right. And that trade played out very nicely. Uh, this is another one on SWK, actually a short. OK, talking about the rising wedge forming here, going over where we think it could head. And you can see the price played out very nicely here. So if you guys are fans of free valuable content as well as free trade ideas and want to get those sent straight to your inbox, sign up for that newsletter using the link in the description and we'll get right into the video. Now, natural gas prices fall further, but they're still staying above that $3 level. And as the Wall Street Journal has highlighted here, even with the recent declines, however, natural gas's front month contract is staying above the psychologically important $3 level. Now, as soon as we broke above $3, I mentioned that that is the psychological level, okay? That is where new money has entered into the natural gas market. And a lot of that new money that entered in when natural gas broke $3 is really using that as a threshold, right? So there's the big potential that if natural gas goes back under $3, a lot of people are just using that as that psychological level where whether they want to be long natural gas or whether they want to get out or potentially even short natural gas using that $3 level. So it is a very, very important psychological level. And we do want to see natural gas hold and maintain that level. Now, uh, there's a new golden era for U.S. natural gas storage looms as demand and rates rise. Now, during the 2010s, many storage contracts were renewed or sold to new parties under a one year or two year tenure. Now, though, many interested buyers, especially in the Gulf Coast salt storage market, are willing to pay up and sign on for significantly longer term contracts. The premium that those buyers are willing to pay for salt dome storage reflects the enhanced capability that such facilities can offer with five, six, seven or even more full storage cycles annually. By contrast, even the best depleted reservoir or hard rock cavern storage may offer three or four full turns per year. All right. So just a little bit of the news there. If you go over some of the other recent storage related deals in the U.S. gas market, that includes energy transfers, acquisition of Enable Midstream and Berkshire Hathaway's move to purchase storage and transmissions assets from Dominion Energy. Now, Berkshire Hathaway, that's Buffett's baby. And Buffett has been very um, active in the energies, uh, you know, different in the different energy sectors. OK, uh, whether it's things like natural gas or whether it's things like, uh, you know, oil and, and oxy, for instance, things like that. And uh, we all know that Berkshire is uh, Buffett's little baby. Now, Chevron Australia Union stick to the strike plan even as pay talks continue. OK, so the unions at Chevron's liquefied natural gas facilities in Australia, they reaffirmed their plan to resume strikes this week as mediated talks continued on Monday. Members have made it clear that they want Chevron to stop twisting the draft terms of our EBAs, this is the Enterprise Bargaining Agreements, and are prepared to ramp up the PIA, which is protected industrial action, until the EBAs are properly sorted. Chevron said late on Sunday that it was extremely disappointed by the vote to stick with the strike plan against the arbitrator's request and the union's decision to ignore the recommendation while discussions are continuing is very concerning, unreasonable, and undermines the considerable progress made prior to Chevron requesting the commission's assistance last week. Now, here we have our natural gas weekly chart, okay? And we've talked about the structure many times in the videos. Uh, there's some important developments that we're seeing right now. So initially, we had this MACD crossover in the weekly time frame that happened right here. And we've consistently put in higher lows since that point, breaking out of our triangle pattern here. And 
the retest of this triangle pattern is actually going to be that three dollar psychological level so we'd like to see a breakout retest and continue up higher versus a false breakout right a false breakout is very important to look out for and be aware of it's also known as a look above and fail and the reason it's so important and significant is because at the retest, buyers, that's the opportunity for buyers to really step in, okay, is once you get the breakout, you want to see the buyers step in on the retest and show that they're in control of the price action. If they fail to retest and push price up higher, it's going to show that bulls are not in control and that actually bears are in control. So something very important that you want to look out for. Another thing that had us bullish on natural gas heading into this pattern was the inverse bump and run pattern here indicated by these two trend lines. Okay, so you can go ahead and Google that pattern if you don't, aren't familiar with it, but it's indicated by a prevailing downtrend and then you have an aggressive bump down in price. We broke the first trend line and I mentioned we want to see us come up and break the second trend line. And you can see we're also retesting that trend line here now on the MACD, or I'm sorry, on the RSI. So we want to pay close attention to that and, and, and you know, monitor this as well as the retest of this initial breakout. Okay, so, um, you know, it's, it's make or break here time for natural gas over the next coming weeks. And we really need to see, um, you know, who's really in control here. Is it the buyers or is it the sellers? Now, this is the futures monthly supply and demand zones. And I highlighted in, um, you know, some of the previous videos that this right here, guys, is no man's land. Entering trades in between your major supply and demand zones is entering a trade in no man's land and your risk to reward ratio is very skewed, right? It's, it's very hard to make a profitable trade, especially a swing trade, whenever you're entering in no man's land, because it's not clear whether price is going to continue higher or continue lower. When you enter a trade in the key areas of supply and demand, you know that these are areas where price tends to push higher or price tends to push lower, right? And so you can set up your trades with a much better risk to reward ratio. And we've been stuck battling the same overhead supply zone for the entire year of 2023. We had that push out and that breakout, and now we're coming back and retesting those levels, as I mentioned we would uh, in the last two videos. So this is the four hour chart for those MCX futures. And I gave the warning sign uh, basically when we were up here of what you wanted to watch out for. We were testing our key support level and I said, hey, you know, I've highlighted many videos in the past when the four hour RSI is overbought, followed by a MACD crossover to the downside where the white line crosses below the red line. We usually see a significant pullback, right? We got one there. We saw the same thing happen right here. We saw a significant pullback. And when we were initially first overbought here, I, I pointed out that we had some bearish divergence. So if you're not familiar with bearish divergence, I'll break it down for you guys really quickly. Here, we're making lower highs on the RSI. And at this point, we're making higher highs on the price action. So there's a divergence, a negative divergence on the RSI. And I said, hey, that doesn't mean we have to go down. Let's actually look for a breakout of this RSI. And that's going to show lots of momentum and strength. And look at where that breakout happened, right? The breakout happened right here. And that's when we pushed above and got to our wave three targets here. So that was very nice to see. OK, and then uh, I highlighted, hey, now we've come back and we're still overbought in this area and the MACD is starting to curl down. If we get the crossover here, it's very possible we see a nice pullback. Right. And then you see we got that strong pullback and we came down to the first key support level on the MCX futures at 255.8. Now, all of these areas right here, basically this entire previous supply zone. OK, we want to see if we can shift this to demand and push price up higher. Natural gas prices are pulling back, but even if it pulls back all the way for the gap fill right here, you see there's a gap in between these um, in between these candlesticks. If we even if we come back all the way down to the gap fill, it's right at the bottom of our supply zone. And it's also the 76.4 percent retracement level of the recent move up. So all of that is healthy potential retracement territory to continue going higher. Right. And so that's what we're looking for. Right. We want to see price absorb here, react, react in a manner that shows that there's a demand imbalance, that there's more buyers and sellers and push price back up above, ultimately to break past our wave three highs and hit our wave five targets after the wave four pullback. Now, again, we need to be cautious of the look above and fail where we look above here and we trade back down outside of the supply zone. That's not going to be a good look. That's not what we're looking for, right? Um, now, if you guys are ever interested in a one-on-one -on -one session with me where you guys can figure out how we're able to get these really nice returns on your trades using options, uh, feel free to head on over to the Ko-Fi platform. There's a link in the description for that. You click on the commissions page and I do these 30 minute and one hour sessions every single week. Uh, and this is going to be the platform now that I'm using to book all of those one on one sessions. Now, uh, this is the four hours chart zoomed in just so you, you can see things a little bit clearer. 
right? You see, we bounced off of that very cleanly, very nicely. All right. And we're going to see if we can hold, consolidate and push higher. Or as I mentioned, if we do continue to break down, it's still all healthy retracement territory. Now, this is the Boyle daily chart. And the main thing I want to highlight here, okay, because if you're trying to trade things like Boyle and UNG, you definitely need to pay attention to the futures. Um, and so, we're not going to break down so much of the micros on boil. I will give you guys the key levels right now, 64.68, 61.36, $68.72.10. Um, those are basically your four main levels that you want to pay attention to right now for support and resistance. Um, but, you know, when we talk about the potential of natural gas maintaining that $3 level and potentially going higher up to $3.50, up to $4, um, you know, that could really accelerate the price of boil if it does so in a rapid fashion, okay, being that boil is leveraged. Now, there's many risks with trading something like boil, but if you understand um, the risks and, you know, the factors of decay and contango and things like that, which I have a really good video explaining all of that in great detail, you can look it up, exactly trades, decay, boil, UNG, and it breaks it down, Um you know, the whole thing I'm getting at is there's three stages to a reversal, right? So we have our downtrend here, right? And then we have our box consolidation. So you can see we're stuck in this area of overhead supply, pretty much making a triple or a quad top here. And if we were to retest this zone, the more times you test the zone or a level, the weaker it's going to get. And so the possibility increases of us getting a breakout, looking for a retest and then push higher, right? So when the three stages of reversal, you have the downtrend, right? Then you have your box consolidation period, and then you ultimately have the reversal. So this is a scenario. This is not a guarantee. This is just one thing that I'm looking at as a potential scenario. If natural gas really starts to run and continues to maintain bullishness, um, this is something that you know, we could end up seeing it play out. There's a huge gap up here to fill on boil, uh, taking it back up to the 130 to 140 price range. And, um, you know, that's going to be a possibility. Now, there's so much work to be done for that uh, to happen, you know. So I don't want you guys to watch this video and go all in on boil because it's at $65 or so. And you think it's going to go to 140 in the next month. That's not what I'm saying. You know, but this is just something that I'm going to monitor and see how it progresses. Now, this is UNG daily chart. There's two gaps up to fill here on the daily as of recently after the gaps down. We did bounce very nicely off of the 715 support level. 731 is going to be overhead resistance. 777 is going to be overhead resistance. 821, 852, and 904. Those are your um, overhead price targets, overhead resistance. Below 715. Our major support levels at 667, 642, and 606. Those are the key areas that I'm watching right now when it comes to UNG. Now, that's it for today's video. Don't forget to sign up for that free newsletter using the link in the description. Sign up for Investment Intelligence to get free valuable content as well as free trade ideas sent directly to your inbox. And if you want to learn how we trade options and some of the strategies that I use to get returns like these, um, go ahead and use the link in the description to sign up for the Ko-Fi page and you can click on the commissions tab and book a 30 minute or one hour session with me directly.